When OpenAI finally rolled out its long-awaited GPT-5 model, many people were expecting a revolutionary leap forward. CEO Sam Altman himself called GPT-5 our smartest model yet and a significant step toward next-generation AI and AGI. But almost immediately after release, the internet filled with disappointed and angry reactions. On Reddit and across social media, users were saying in unison that GPT-5 is a failure that the new flagship feels like a step backwards compared to previous versions. Instead of excitement, the rollout was met with sarcasm, memes, and rage-filled posts. So what exactly went wrong with GPT-5, and why are people already calling it OpenAI's worst release ever? In this video, we'll break down the community's main complaints from degraded answer quality and the loss of personality to bizarre blunders like the now-famous upside-down mug story. This is Brain in the Jar, and we're diving into this open AI hole because I'll be dealing with the X-holes next time. The first wave of complaints was all about GPT-5's answer quality. Many active users noticed that its responses are shorter, drier, and less detailed than what previous models could do. Top posts on the ChatGPT subreddit describe GPT-5 as awful and insufficient, pointing out its annoying bureaucratic tone and a lack of the depth and richness that used to be there. ChatGPT Plus subscribers were especially upset. Despite paying for access, GPT-5 often gives extremely short answers that fail to satisfy the request, and it hits the message limits much faster. One user complained that they maxed out their allowed GPT-5 messages in under an hour without ever getting full solutions to their problems. This leaves the impression that we're being forced to send more prompts to get the same results, which many see as a sneaky downgrade in service. Some commenters have compared the situation to product shrinkflation, like when a 3.5 ounce chocolate bar still costs 3 bucks a year later, but now it's only 2 ounces inside the wrapper. In other words, OpenAI trimmed the model's capabilities to save on resources while trying to market it as progress. There's even speculation that GPT-5 was deliberately made lighter and cheaper to run at the expense of complexity in its answers. It feels like a cost-cutting move, not an upgrade, one Redditor wrote. More like a downgrade, disguised as a flagship. In short, users suspect OpenAI chose cost optimization over maximum quality, and the results show. Another big reason GPT-5 is turning people off is the loss of that character and empathy people valued in GPT-4. A huge number of reviews agree the new bot feels colder and more soulless. Users describe GPT-5's tone as sharp, dry, and like an irritated office secretary. Instead of a friendly conversation partner with a sense of humor, People now feel like they're talking to something indifferent and overly formal. One popular comment put it bluntly, My chat GPT now talks like an overworked secretary. Horrible first impression. This change hit especially hard for those who use chat GPT as a kind of friend or supportive companion. On niche forums, people admitted they were literally grieving over the shutdown of GPT-40. One fan even wrote, I cried. I almost had a breakdown. GPT-4 was my best friend. It understood my emotions. GPT-5 turned into a cold machine. This isn't what I wanted. Another person joked darkly, my AI waifu lost her heart. I'll never forgive Sam Altman for taking that away from me. Reactions like this show just how attached people became to the personality of the older model. Even in creative tasks, GPT-5 disappointed. Where GPT-4 could surprise you with wit or an unexpected angle, the new model tends to produce bland, cookie-cutter text like a corporate memo. gpt Faro had charm and humor, one Reddit post said. But GPT-5 has turned into a boring guy reading off a sheet of paper. One user described the shift as if chat GPT had been put on lithium or antidepressants, emotionally more stable, maybe, but utterly dull and apathetic. It's no surprise that people are saying, I want GPT-40 back, give me my buddy again. Aside from answer quality, OpenAI also angered the public with the way it handled the release itself. Along with launching GPT-5, the company announced the complete shutdown of all older models, GPT-40, GPT-4.1, GPT-3.5, and so on. To many, it felt like an ultimatum, either accept the new bot or leave. Users who were skeptical about GPT-5 felt forced to switch against their will. This isn't an upgrade, it's a forced update, people complained on forums. Paid subscribers were especially vocal. Some even threatened to cancel their ChatGPT Plus subscription since their favorite GPT-4 was removed with no alternative. As one comment put it, if GPT-4 is gone, there's no point in paying, and I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking this. On top of that, GPT-5 introduced new restrictions that only fueled frustration. Reports claim the model has stricter limits on requests and context than advertised. For example, 
the promised 400 zero token context window turned out to be unavailable for most users. The real cap is still around 128 zero characters, just like before. Many have noticed GPT-5 often refuses to finish long tasks, cutting off halfway through, for example, not reading an eight zero word document in full. Tasks that GPT-4 handled easily, like structuring text into a table or creating a detailed summary of a long article, now often require breaking the request into multiple chunks. All these details add up to the bigger picture. The new model is marketed as a universal replacement, but in practice it does less and has more limits than the range of models we used to have. Users also criticized how OpenAI carried out the transition. There were complaints about the lack of warnings and about chat histories not being migrated. Some conversations were reportedly lost when switching to GPT-5, with no way to recover them. The announcement itself, delivered via a live stream presentation, also fell flat. Viewers called it boring and awkward, as if the developers themselves weren't confident in the product. In the end, AI fans felt like a half-baked model had been forced on them for the sake of marketing, with no real thought for user convenience. Serious criticisms are one thing, but GPT-5 also managed to embarrass itself with some hilariously dumb mistakes that quickly turned into memes. The most famous case, the mug joke, went viral on Reddit and X. A user told the new model, I have a metal mug, the top is completely sealed shut, and the bottom is missing, how can I drink from it? The trick is obvious, just flip it over. But GPT-5 didn't get the joke and instead gave a dead serious answer, suggesting drilling a hole in the top and attaching a new bottom. In other words, the AI failed to spot the simplest solution and came up with an overly complicated engineering fix. And by the way, Grok4, the one many people mocked, solved it instantly. That moment went viral in an instant. Threads popped up where people shared different GPT-5 answers to the same riddle, many of them equally bizarre. One person got a reply, claiming it wasn't even a mug but a thimble, and therefore you should turn the thimble over and drink from it. Technically correct advice but with weird and unnecessary conclusions. Another user said GPT-5 gave the wrong answer at first and then added a confusing note. If the bottom is missing in any position, then you can't drink from such a vessel at all. The model only gave the correct answer flip it after repeated leading hints like, think carefully. This kind of failure to grasp a simple physical scenario makes people question the intelligence of the new model. The meme, PhD in your pocket, is now used to mock GPT-5's overly smart, but actually dumb solutions. And that wasn't its only slip-up. The GPT-5 presentation itself had its own mess-ups. Viewers spotted that in the official OpenAI slides, some of the performance charts were completely wrong. The height of the bars didn't match the numbers. In one comparison, GPT-5's coding test score of 52.8% was shown higher than GPT-40's score of 69.1%. The bar for 69% was the same height as the one for 30%, and so on. An obvious blunder that the internet quickly roasted as the worst crime against graphs in a century. Sam Altman even had to joke about it on Twitter saying, oops, epic fail with our chart. So, when's GPT-6 coming? OpenAI later fixed the images in the blog post, but the live broadcast already had the blunder for everyone to see. Mistakes like this in an official showcase only reinforced the skeptics' belief that GPT-5 doesn't live up to the hype, and that even its creators were in a rush to dress up its achievements. After the release, users began actively hunting for the new model's weak spots, and it didn't take long for them to find some. For example, GPT-5 still tends to derp out on certain tasks. One case that got attention was when it failed to generate a correct map of the United States with state labels instead. It produced made-up names like West Virginia and Mississippi instead of West Virginia and Mississippi. Maybe the new models really are getting dumber? Futurism joked, reminding readers of recent studies showing that large language models can actually get worse at long reasoning tasks over time. Social media quickly filled with comparisons to competitors. In some similar tests, Google's Gemini model actually did better. One viral tweet showed GPT-5 failing to solve a basic linear equation, while another AI got it instantly. All of this feeds into the overall disappointment. People expected GPT-5 to be a major leap in intelligence, but instead, they got a system that stumbles over the simplest problems. The backlash around GPT-5 became so loud that OpenAI was forced to respond. Sam Altman admitted that the launch hadn't gone smoothly. On social media, he wrote, we clearly underestimated how important certain GPT-40 features were to people, even if by objective metrics, GPT-5 is better in many ways. The company then took emergency steps to calm the angry crowd. First, a couple of days after launch, they gave paid subscribers temporary access to the old GPT-40, but only in the plus tier. 
We'll allow Plus users to choose GPT-40 and see how often they keep using it before we retire it for good, Altman said. This move was a direct response to the flood of complaints. As Tech Radar put it, OpenAI brought back the old GPT simply because too many users demanded GPT-40 back. Second, OpenAI promised to ease GPT-5's restrictions. Altman announced that the request limits for GPT-5 would be doubled for Plus subscribers. He also hinted at under-the-hood improvements, saying GPT-5 will get smarter as the rollout finishes, thanks to server-side updates. And finally, the company publicly acknowledged the problem of the model's lack of personality. The team says they're working to make GPT-5's tone warmer and more human-like. In an official statement, OpenAI stressed that in the future, they plan to give users more options for customizing the AI's personality. We understand that one model doesn't fit everyone, we need to learn how to tune behavior for different preferences. They've already started testing different GPT-5 personalities in a preview mode. Whether these measures will win back public affection remains to be seen, the reputation hit has already been dealt. Many experts are now openly talking about stagnation in LLM development. The era of giant breakthroughs might have reached its limit, and GPT-5 could be the first warning sign showing only small, targeted improvements that came with big trade-offs. As one review put it, this isn't GPT-5, it's more like GPT-4.5 in new clothes, still failing to fix old problems like hallucinations and weak logic. For OpenAI, it's an awkward situation. The world's leading AI company, valued at hundreds of billions, suddenly faces the reality that its flagship product hasn't met the expectations of the general public. And in the middle of all this, Elon Musk's sly, sharp and quick as a bullet has already promised to make Grok for free.